Hello, I'm David from Eda Motor Group, and this is the new Ionic 6 from Hyundai. Finally, we have got some more information on specifications. A translated Korean brochure has managed to make its way online, which should give us a really decent idea of what's coming. Now, don't forget that the information here could change depending on what country or region you are, so don't take this as gospel, but it will give us a phenomenal idea. So, phenomenal? it will give us a phenomenal idea as to what's what. So let's start at the beginning. Apparently, at the moment anyway, from the translation, we can see that the four models are called the E-Lite, the Exclusive, Exclusive Plus and Prestige. And of course, there was that famous incident that the limited edition, first edition, <laughs> sold out in Europe within 24 hours, which is bonkers. We also look to be getting nine colors from the offset. This includes black, white, blue, gray, a darker blue, a dark green, red, a gold matte, and a dark green matte as well. I cannot wait to see what those matte colors look like in person. And it wouldn't really be a EV without some eco-friendly mantras, would it? And this car apparently has it in spades. First on the list is a bio paint. This bio paint door trim is made with rapeseed flowers and corn extracts. As well as that, there is bio pet yarn headlining. The material used for the headliner uses eco-friendly fibers extracted from sugarcane. There's eco-processed natural leather. This leather is used for the seats and apparently was processed in an eco-friendly manner through the use of flaxseed oil extract. And apparently there is a Bio TPO crash pad. This uses eco-friendly fibers, again extracted from sugar canes, and apparently this is used in the track pad as well. So there is a lot of uh, eco things going into this car, and it's not over yet. The carpet and car mats of the Ionic 6, get this, are made using fishnets. Now, anybody who knows anything about eco-friendliness means that they know that the thing that is actually the worst thing at polluting in the sea isn't things like plastic straws, etc. It's actually plastic fishnets as they get discarded and clumped together a load of other plastics and nastiness that's floating in the ocean as well. So this is actually really cool. Well done, Hyundai. And of course, let's not forget about the other things that are available as well. For example, over the air updates, which will keep the car updated, assumedly by a cellular network, which means that you never have to worry about plugging in firmware or anything like that. It's just going to do it itself. The car has also got digital side mirrors and an OLED monitor as well. Now, this is really, really cool. OLED, for those of you who don't know, is basically a type of screen that self lights the individual pixels in a monitor. That might not sound really cool, but what it means is that you can turn off individual pixels, which gives you a true black, which means that those screens should look the crispest and sharpest out there. The digital side mirrors built into the crash pad use cameras and OLED displays to provide a clearer view for the driver. This is something that's definitely going to be going forward. In terms of making a streamlined car, having those smaller wing mirrors actually does make quite a bit of difference. And it's nice to see that we are progressing in the car industry faster and faster. The car is available with vehicle to load on the inside as well. Located under the middle second row of seats, this enables unrestricted use of electronic devices inside the vehicle. Something that was really kind of available on the outside is now also available on the inside. This is an awesome feature. So yeah, having the ability to offload electricity from your battery is really cool. In the future, I can see it where somebody in some part of the world is going to have an outage and they're going to have an electric car and they're going to be able to power the house through that. It's going to be very cool. Also for everybody sort of at the moment anyway, it means that you can take things like e-scooters with you and charge them on the go. This means you can park virtually anywhere and get places like in city cities and towns way, way faster. I love e-scooters. I would love a solar e-scooter. Solar, if you're out there, please. <laughs> but moving on, let's get some more features. Don't forget that those are the kind of things that could be optional extras, but we will find out, obviously, when I get my hands on one. So make sure you like the video and subscribe for that. 
the pixel design from the Ionic 5 has returned. The four interactive pixel lights inside the vehicle give you the feeling that you're communicating with the 6 itself and indicates the car's current status like welcome and goodbye, drive modes, EV ready, voice recognition, charging, and loads, loads more. Something that I don't doubt will be in basically all of Hyundai's cars going forward. It's going to mean that everyone's going to start speaking this language that the car is talking to you, it makes for a much more immersive experience and kind of gives you more information without distracting from the road. There's of course a digital key. You can use the smartphone to lock or unlock the door, start the vehicle when necessary, and you can share your digital key with others. This means obviously that if you do lose a key or your partner loses a key, it's not a big deal. We can pop the key on their phone. Really good idea. And of course, I imagine Hind have done it safely and securely as well. But what about safety features? Now, there is a good question. What are Hyundai going to be doing about safety? Hyundai are offering something called FCA2, or Forward Collision Avoidance 2. This is a sensor that alerts you when danger is detected, such as a sudden deceleration of the car in front, the presence of stopped cars, pedestrian spikes, and it will help stop the car if the risk increases after the alert is sounded. It also helps with things like uh, detecting left or right at an intersection or T-junction um, as well. So it's kind of almost an all-round system. It can also help steer the vehicle to avoid a potential collision with an oncoming car and even help with pedestrians on the side of the road. The car is going to have blind spot avoidance assist too. A warning will be issued if the risk of a collision with the vehicle next to or behind you is detected. If you're using the signal, for example, to change lanes. The car has a navigation-based smart cruise control too. This system helps maintain driver's safe speed based on road conditions when driving on the highway or on a regular road. It automatically reduces the car's speed just before it enters a reduced speed zone. After leaving the zone, the vehicle will be brought back to its designated speed as well. Apparently, it can also help by slowing down before you meet a curved section of the road. So it knows as when it's, for example, let's say if you're approaching a long sweeping bend, you don't really want to go around there at the maximum speed limit or you, or you and your passengers may be thrown to the side, but this will actually slow it down before it hits that corner, which is really rather intelligent and very clever. The car's got lane follow assist too. This will basically help you follow the car in front and stay in the correct lane in the center. The car's also got rear cross traffic avoidance assist as well. A little bit of a step up from rear cross traffic alert. If a collision risk is detected from the right or left while driving in reverse, the driver is issued a collision warning. And if it is ignored or if it increases after the warning, the brakes are automatically applied, which is fantastic. And all of this is part of Hyundai's Smart Sense package. Again, I suspect this is going to become more and more standard on Hyundai's going forward, but it is awesome to see it in this futuristic car. I genuinely can't wait to drive it. I really can't. But what about under the bonnet or the floor, I guess? Buyers will be able to choose from battery capacities of 53 kilowatt hours or 77 kilowatt hours. And the longer range model has a WLTP certified range of up to 379 miles on one charge. Now, this is converted spec. It may change slightly. There may be some differences there, um, depending on what region you're in, but it's not going to be drastic changes. And let me tell you something, that kind of range can only come about, well, let's face it, because of the fact it's based on a streamliner style car. It looks super streamlined. Um, and I imagine has been going through the wind tunnel with uh, with varying degrees of success until they've arrived to this beautiful shape. Hyundai quote a 0 to 60 time of 5.1 seconds currently. Again, this can change depending on region, depending on what kind of tests are being done. But let's face it, if that if that's what it is, then that is absolutely phenomenal. Just to give you an idea of how fast that actually is, a 2000 aerial atom has a 0 to 60 time of 5.5 seconds. And a 2020 Bentley Bentayga has a 0 to 60 of 5.3 seconds. So you're going to have fun with it. Obviously, that will be on the quickest dual motor version. But the nice thing is, is that the other versions that aren't dual motor will be rear wheel drive. But the fastest car is going to have a motor on each axle and you will be motoring, definitely. Apparently, this is going to create a combined 320 brake horsepower, 320 
125 PS and over 440 pounds feet of torque. And that's a magical 239 kilowatts of power. So hopefully I've done all of the conversions correctly there and everybody can understand what I'm on about. <laughs> Something that I'm pretty sure won't change at this point as we are so near release is the length and width of the car. The car has a length of 4.8 meters at a height of just under 1.5 and a width of just under 1.9. So it should track very well on the road, especially if you get the four wheel drive version, that car is gonna be stable as anything. There also appears to be several interior colors available but don't forget they can of course all change depending on location so if you want to get in touch and have any questions maybe book a test drive uh ring is up there and an email and if you want to see some information about when the ionic 6 was announced you can click on screen or or perhaps you want to see our overview of the hyundai i30n that one's on the other side of the screen don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time Bye bye